This is a video about choosing a statistical test for your IB Biology internal assessment. Dun dun dun. Really, it's not so bad. There are two main features of your experiment to consider. And the first is what's the purpose of your research question? There are two major purposes you could have. The first is comparison. The other is relationship. Comparisons try to understand whether there's a difference between the groups. Relationship tries to find a connection. Examples of comparison could be perhaps males versus females, control groups versus treatment groups, or grouping individuals by color preference. In every single example, we have at least two groups and we're trying to find a difference. Relationship, on the other hand, could look like, for example, looking for an equation between height and flexibility, or asking whether age predicts muscle mass. We're trying to see if medication dosage is linked to recovery time. In every one of these scenarios, we're seeking out correlation or causation or some sort of prediction from one variable to the other. The second thing we have to evaluate after purpose is the type of data we're looking at. And the two main categories are categorical and continuous. Categorical data is qualitative. Even if there are numbers attached, those values don't represent any numerical meaning. Continuous data, on the other hand, is quantitative or numerical. As you increase the value, that represents an increasing amount of that property. Categorical uh, qualities could look like political party, or even a yes or no answer. Or it could be which gene was expressed. On the other hand, if your data involves things like heart rate, age, or number of bacterial colonies, then you're looking at continuous data. Even in that last example, the number of colonies would only be an integer value, but that still qualifies as continuous data in statistics. Once you figure out your experiment's purpose and type of data, you can choose between three main families of statistical tests. Those families include the chi-squared family, the t-test or ANOVA family, and the correlation family. Remember, purpose has two choices, comparison, relationship. Type of data could be either categorical or continuous. If your experiment is trying to draw a comparison or find a difference, and you only have categorical data, then you can almost guarantee that you will be working in the chi-squared family. On the other hand, if you're drawing a comparison or finding a difference, but your data has categorical and continuous types, that would be the t-test family. What does it mean to be categorical and continuous? Well, maybe you are trying to compare the mean height, height is continuous, of different groups of people. The groups qualify as categorical, height, that's continuous. On the other hand, if you're trying to find a relationship between continuous variables, then you are definitely in the correlation family. Here are our three families, and to summarize, here are the typical characteristics. Once you know which family you're dealing with, you can start to drill down to find a particular test that's appropriate for your experiment. Chi-squared is easy because there are the same two tests for any number of groups or levels. In the t-test family, we have to know how many groups does our independent variable consider. If you're only looking at one sample group, you would use a one sample t-test. That would be the case for an experiment where you're trying to compare the mean height at your high school to the US population for teenagers. In this case, you have a known average. You know the population average for all teenagers in the US. 
and you're comparing it to one sample from your high school. On the other hand, maybe your experiment involves two groups or two levels of the independent variable. For example, perhaps you're comparing the mean height of men to women, and you're trying to figure out whether there's a difference. In that case, you would use a two-sample unpaired t-test. There is another kind, a two-sample paired t-test, and that's for scenarios where you test the same group twice. For example, maybe you have a group of people and you give them a memory task before doing an exercise, and then you give them another memory task after doing an exercise. And you're trying to find out, did the exercise make a difference? You're looking for a difference. In that case, your data points have specific pairing, and you're looking for a difference. You're looking for an improvement. Um, so this is the scenario where you would use a paired t-test. But it doesn't have to be the same group. For example, your pairing might involve mothers and daughters, or it could be any two groups the experimenter specifically paired together. If you have more than two groups, so three or more, you'll be using a one-way ANOVA test. This stands for Analysis of Variance. This test looks to see whether or not they are all similar. If you have any one group that is different, you'll get a statistically significant result from this test. But the thing about one-way ANOVA tests is it doesn't tell you which of the three groups or which of the four groups or five or however many, it doesn't tell you which one is statistically different or if there are multiple that are statistically different for, from each other. This test only looks for whether or not they're all similar or at least one is different. On to the final family. We will consider just the scenario where you have one independent variable and one dependent variable. In those circumstances, there are two primary tests you might look for, Pearson's correlation and regression. Correlation tries to figure out how closely connected the two variables are. Is height a predictor of flexibility? Does age correlate with muscle mass? So it tries to understand how well those variables go together. If you know one, can you predict the other one really, really well. Do they correlate strongly or do they correlate poorly? That's what correlation tries to understand. On the other hand, regression tries to figure out a specific mathematical equation that describes the relationship. So it doesn't just want to know, can height predict flexibility? It asks, what's the equation? Is it y equals 4x minus 2? And that's what regression is after. It tries to find an equation so that it can make predictions for data points you may not even have measured. Now, a really important thing to understand is that many of these tests make assumptions about your data. The most common assumption is that your data is distributed normally, or it follows a Gaussian distribution. That's another name for a normal distribution. So if you don't satisfy that assumption, you would not want to use the test because you'll get bad results. Your results won't be reliable. The good news is that many of these tests have something called a non-parametric alternative or counterpart. And here are those alternatives or counterparts for some of the tests I've shown. Before we go, a quick caveat. This video is primarily aimed at IB biology students. That's a high school class that's going to be at a college level but it's intended for a group that may never have taken any statistics classes. So there are a lot of simplifications and things that we've just not discussed at all in this video. For example, Spearman's correlation can apply to categorical data. We haven't looked at ordinal data, which can sometimes classify as categorical, and sometimes it's treated as, uh, as continuous. So there are things, tests, groups, there are sorts of classifications that we have not included at all in this video, uh, and it's really aimed at organizing the main tests that an IB biology student would encounter. So with that caveat, thanks for watching. I hope this has helped, and stay tuned for more videos where we look at how to perform the statistical tests and calculations that we need.